This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, fundraising begins for a major redevelopment of Dunedin's SPCA. A Dunedin high school student prepares for some international competition across the Tasman. And we meet members of a new boys choir now officially installed at St Paul's Cathedral. Good evening Dunedin, I'm Callum Proctor. A large scale redevelopment of the local SPCA facility in Opaho is being planned. Fundraising has begun in the form of a cupcake campaign and staff have high hopes for the new premises. Selling cute candy coated creatures for charity. The SPCA's annual cupcake fundraiser secures money for abandoned, abused and neglected animals. And business development manager Kirsty Thompson says it's crucial to keeping the organisation running. We don't receive any uh, assistance from the government or local body, uh, even though you know we're, we're a law enforcement agency uh, and we're an animal welfare charity. Uh, yes, we don't receive e any kind of funding, so we have to do all the fundraising to support ourselves. And Cupcake Day is one of the major things that we do. Last year, the local SPCA's Cupcake Day made around ten thousand dollars which went towards the day-to-day -day running of the centre and the care of animals within. And Thompson says this year staff are aiming a bit higher. This year we want to break about 15,000, I hope, you know, just to, to have that increased amount will be great. Um, nationwide we're looking at 350,000. Money raised locally by the Cupcake campaign is set to go towards the redevelopment of the Opaho facility, a project which Thompson says is still in the planning stage with the focus on collecting as much money as they can. And that's made possible by the organisation's many volunteers. We relied on the community to bake cupcakes for us to support this event, so people donated their time, their skills and ingredients to bake loads of cupcakes, which we're now selling for uh, the proceeds coming back to SPCA. Other donations are needed for the SPCA's redevelopment to improve the temporary home for these guys and those to follow. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. The bungled traffic calming measures for South Dunedin's cycle network are being fixed by City Council contractors. Floating traffic islands will be removed to improve flow and ensure large vehicles like fire engines can navigate intersections. Two-way traffic will also be reinstated on several streets. Ghost road markings will be removed and new signage installed. Over the next few months, residents will be asked to give feedback on the cycleway. Council staff admit they made mistakes during the initial design and tender process. To date, the development has cost about $4 million. The council manager in charge of the project has resigned. Well, a John McGlashan College pupil is about to represent New Zealand in an Australian cross-country competition. He's among a small group of Kiwis selected for the contest and it's helping him to fulfil a lifelong dream. Years of dedication to the sport of running are paying off for Ollie Chignell. The 17-year-old's always wanted to represent New Zealand and that dream is coming true. He's heading overseas to take on the best of the best in this year's Australian Junior Cross Country Champs. First is the, uh, is the ultimate aim. Uh, anything, anything in the top ten I'd be, I'd be ecstatic with, but if I were to come away with a medal or even to win, that would be, uh, that would be something really special. Chignall qualified for the Aussie contest earlier this year after performing well at the National Secondary School Cross Country Champs. That success was backed up by a victory in the Christchurch run and it's led to many weeks of training as Chignall gears up for the next level. Over the winter there's a lot of, lot of long distance training so there's a lot of heavy mileage uh, doing, doing near to 100 k's a week and uh, yeah, a lot, uh, lot of long repetitions. 21 Kiwis are competing in his part of the Melbourne competition and Chignall's proud to be among them. He'll also race in an Aussie All-Schools relay, hoping for another win. 
and with the Saturday cross-country race looming, his focus has changed to shorter runs as preparation tapers off. Yeah, so it's just all about gunning back that speed that I would usually have in the track season and uh, that becomes particularly important over the, over the last sort of kilometre of the race where it really starts to pick up and that's where the medals have decided. Chignall's made hundreds of friends through running, supported all the way by his coach and family. He says the feeling of victory is second to none and he hopes to experience it again across the ditch. David DeLorean, 39, Dunedin News. Two elderly people are being treated for injuries sustained in a three-car crash near the Queen's Gardens. The crash occurred on State Highway 1 just before midday. Police say one person suffered a cut to the head and another had chest pain where their safety belt was fitted. The cause of the crash is being investigated, but it appears two cars collided at the intersection of Crawford and Rattray Streets. A third vehicle appears to have been hit by one of the crashed cars as it was being reversed. It's not yet known where the charges will be laid. A new group of choristers are singing melodies at St Paul's Cathedral. Members of a new boys choir have been officially installed during the latest church service and the experience is setting them up for life. Months of training is paying off for these young singers as they're officially installed as choristers at St Paul's. The boys choir was set up at the end of last year along with a girls choir and since then the two groups have met before school once a week to learn music theory and train their voices. The, the book that they've been working on for the last nine months means that they're now um, completing that aspect of their training and are now officially turning from probationers into full choristers. And we have the same thing happening to our girls choir next Sunday morning. In the time the groups have been together, Chittenden says he's seen some great talent emerge. These singers have become much more interested in cathedral music too, and say they're getting a lot of experience and fun from being involved in the choirs. I think it's an awesome experience that I could come to St Paul's Choir because, you know, and um, it's awesome because when, like, when I grow up I can also sing in other choirs and I'll already have an experience of what it's like. Um, I just like, I just like singing. I like coming here and stuff, but yeah. I just like singing, that's the main thing, yeah. Cool. I, I quite enjoy just, just coming here to the practices and, meet, and meeting everyone else and just having a good time and enjoying singing, which is quite cool. The groups have a few public performances under their belts now, with these devout churchgoers among those dazzled by the junior talent. And with Dunedin's expansive music scene, Chittenden says the skills being developed during these performances will pay off nicely. We have quite a lot of choirs, and particularly youth choirs and choirs involved with schools. And my hope is that over the coming few weeks, when we come to have an open day later in September, that we'll be able to interest some of that talent into being a part of this choir as well and um, keep on growing our numbers. As Chittenden looks to expand the choirs, he's touting the benefits of the growing groups. He believes the unique musical education kids get is immensely useful, as they develop a deep understanding of music that will serve them well for life. David DeLorean, 39 Dunedin News. Well, still to come on 39 Dunedin News, a former Dunedin student tells us what it takes to become a doctor and Miss World New Zealand. And later celebrations mark the 20th anniversary of Indonesian music being taught at the university. A well, lifestyler can be anybody. We look at a lifestyler as someone who perhaps has been a farmer and is re retiring into a smaller block. It could be someone who's working here in Dunedin and has a few acres at home. It could be mum and the kids with um, with the pony on an acre. You know, it, it, it's anyone that's got uh, a little bit of land rather than just the quarter acre section. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Big Orange, for all your movies, records, books and games. Pre-loved needs and vinyl records, 45s, DVDs. A South Dunedin family owned business for over 15 years. Check us out on Facebook, opposite Westpac on the sunny side of King Edward Street. Discover New Zealand's most innovative museum, Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. 14 stunning galleries, three distinct architectural styles, 
and a million intriguing stories are yours to discover at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. Open daily next to Dunedin Railway Station and with free admission. Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. 128 tracks, dynamic automation, dual faders and totally digital. This is state-of-the-art music production. The SSL Digital Console. You'll find one in the BBC Studios in London, another at CBS Studios in New York, and now one at the University of Otago. It's a good reason why our sound now sounds even better. My name is Maddie Parkins Craig, and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Hedges are something we almost take for granted. A good hedge needs regular maintenance to look its best and to add value and character to your property. For all your hedge care needs, call the team at SGC Services on 0800 783 453. Hi, I'm Mike Kernahan, Chief Executive of the Cancer Society at Targo and Southland Division. On 28th of August, we celebrate 25 years of Daffodil Day. Daffodil Day helps us provide care, comfort and hope to people who have a cancer diagnosis and their families. It helps us run health promotion programs so there might be less cancer in the future and it funds vital cancer research. So please give generously this Daffodil Day. Text HOPE to 469 to donate $3 or visit daffodilday.org.nz and help us make this Daffodil Day the biggest and best yet. Welcome back. A locally owned electrical repair company is in liquidation, owing an estimated $200,000. AF Johnston Electrical is owned by Leanne and Michael Montgomery of Sawyers Bay. Liquidators say the company ceased trading because of difficulties in collecting payments for completed work. Assets have been sold to another electrical firm. There's $50,000 listed as being owed to the company. Creditors haven't been finalised, but it's estimated that inland revenue is owed almost $150,000 alone. And on that note, let's uh, check today's financials. And firstly to uh, the markets, the uh, NZX50 finishing uh, Monday uh, down 144 points at 5,607. And to the exchange rates, the Kiwi dollar falling against all of the major currencies that we monitor here. So. Well, Dunedin Medical graduate Deborah Lambie is preparing to represent New Zealand at the Miss World Beauty Pageant. She'll travel to China for the contest in November and she's here to tell us all about it. Good evening to you, Deborah. Hi. So when were you crowned Miss World New Zealand? How long ago was this? So this was the 25th of April earlier this year and there'd been a massive lead up to the competition. I had 13 trips to Auckland and it was a really exciting and nerve wracking time um, and it was a dream to be crowned on the night but it was also bittersweet because a lot of my friends were in the competition and I knew how much 
they also wanted to win and also how worthy they would have been as title holders. That'll be a night that, that you'll never forget. Is that the biggest pageant you've been involved in, the biggest contest you've been involved in? Yes, so yes, Miss World is the biggest competition I've been involved in and Miss World is also the biggest international beauty competition. There's going to be 135 countries represented in China later in this year and I'm really looking forward to getting to know girls from all around the world and all of these different cultures. So what will you have to do in China? So I think my role as an ambassador for New Zealand is really to share New Zealand's story and that is a story of how 120 years ago New Zealand became the first country in the world to give women the right to vote and how that really paved the way for the rest of the world for equal rights and a brighter future and that's the story that I want to share with the world for New Zealand at Miss World. How long will you be there for? So Miss World is 30 days long. I leave on the 20th of November and the final is of, on the 20th of December. It's going to be an action-packed month with sports competitions, interviews, conferences, leadership forums and I'm really looking forward to learning a lot and I'm sure it's going to be a really life-changing experience. Deborah, tell us about the charity work that you've been involved in in, in the lead up to this. So as Miss World New Zealand, or as a, as a country title holder, every contestant has to have an organisation that they're affiliated with. And for me, my charity work started years ago when I was a founding member of Learn Coach. And Learn Coach is a not-for-profit organisation aimed at reaching struggling NCEA high school students. And we make free online tutorials for these students. And in the last year, we delivered over a million free tutorials to NCEA students. So this pageant coincides with you becoming a doctor as well, so a, a busy time in your life. Tell us about that. Yes, it's always been my dream to become a doctor and it's amazing now, seven years later, that I'm finally about to graduate and even more amazing that um, another one of my dreams being Miss World New Zealand, that I leave to go to Miss World on the same day that I actually become a doctor. Two very uh, different and very special journeys on the same day. How have you managed the, the two roles? It's just with uh, being kind um, to myself and also I think it's a massive team effort so everything I do I do with the support of my family and people in my community and the university's been amazing and the organisations have been amazing which has mean that I've been able to do this. What's, uh, what are your medical career plans? I, um, I'm really interested in research and in health policy and in the future I'd like to work in health policy towards a New Zealand um, in a world that's free from health inequality. Uh, so, right, so what uh, be happens between now and, and November and the, and the Miss World contest? So lots of people focus on the beauty of beauty pageants rather than the purpose of beauty pageants and for me the purpose is definitely my charity work so I'm going to continue to work with Learn Coach and NCA students, reach as many students as possible. I'm also working with the New Zealand Breast Cancer Foundation and Rotary International and so this charity work is for me what it's really about contributing to my community as best I can. All right, Deborah, uh, we wish you all the best for, uh, for China in uh, November. Thank you very much. Okay, after the break on 39 Dunedin News, success for local show jumpers and they're preparing for more and some heavy rain around the region today. We'll find out if it's going to continue in our look at local weather. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. It works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new all black pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. Wake up time and another frantic day ahead for Haraway's Oat Singles. With three delicious flavours in each pack, they don't last long with this family. They're so convenient and tasty and they're ready in seconds. Haraway's Oat Singles are the ideal breakfast or snack on the run for today's busy families. And there's a flavour to suit everyone. Beat the rush and make sure you get your favourite flavour. Haraway's sure. Oat Singles. Try new Kiwi Favourites Caramel Variety Pack. For 30 years, Southern Clams have harvested New Zealand Little Neck Clams in the coastal waters of Otago. Hand harvesting to order at the right place and time ensures perfection of every clam you eat. New Zealand Little Neck Clams, harvested for you by Southern Clams. Place 
in the world. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Hi, I'm Mike Kernahan, Chief Executive of the Cancer Society at Targo and Southland Division. On 28th of August, we celebrate 25 years of Daffodil Day. Daffodil Day helps us provide care, comfort and hope to people who have a cancer diagnosis and their families. It helps us run health promotion programs so there might be less cancer in the future and it funds vital cancer research. So please give generously this Daffodil Day. Text HOPE to 469 to donate $3 or visit daffodilday.org.nz and help us make this Daffodil Day the biggest and best yet. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. A lifestyler to me is a person maybe wanting to escape the hustle and bustle of a good city. Wanting some animals, maybe able to grow their own veggies, have chickens, get their own hens. A lifestyle block can be your supermarket just a good way of living and a lot of people enjoy that rather than being in a city, a very sustainable way to live. An important milestone is being celebrated by a cultural ensemble to mark two decades of local involvement. Traditional Indonesian music has been taught through the University of Otago for the past 20 years now and the anniversary is drawing performers from far and wide. Traditional Indonesian music has a home on campus. University staff alongside students and members of the public are celebrating two decades of gamelan music in Otago. It's the traditional ensemble music of Indonesia, mostly made up of percussion instruments. And through a schedule of seminars, performances and workshops, its local history is being shared. It's been a huge, um, huge part of the music department for, well, 20 years now. <laughs> um, so we use it quite a lot in our teaching and also obviously um, with the community outreach as well. So being involved um, not only with members of the local Indonesian community, but also with um, you know, members of the D Dunedin community more broadly. Katamol says about 20 locals participate in gamelan each year. And she says it's an activity anyone can get involved in, regardless of age or ethnicity. Um, if you can count from one to seven, and you can move your hand up and down or side to side, you can play gamelan. <laughs> So, um, you know, it's really great. You can get, you know, we've got really young kids and we've also got sort of more elderly people involved. So, yeah, it's real sort of all ages, very communal type of music making. Performing with the strong Dunedin contingent are a handful of guests from elsewhere in New Zealand as well as Australia. And Catamol says she's happy to see the public exposed to such a broad range of music and dance. The chance to... Um, get some exposure, I think, to Indonesian music and Indonesian culture and uh, just to broaden their horizons a little bit, I think. Um, you know, it's not very often that we have this kind of event happen here in Dunedin. So, yeah, it's a, just a chance to, you know, listen to something new and get exposed to a different culture. Catamol says it's great to see so many people gathered to celebrate the 20-year milestone, coming together to share their passions for Indonesian music, culture and dance. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Local horse riders are clearing obstacles on their way to show jumping success. Many have been involved in a yearly competition held at Mosgiel and they're training for bigger events set to thrill crowds over the next few months. For rider and trusty steed, local show jumpers vie for points in this annual competition held over three weekends in Mosgiel. And Otago Show Jumping Group President Sharon Landreth says there's plenty of talent to judge. We have a huge array of talent for show jumping. And um, uh, we service the whole Otago area. Um, Claudia Hay, who's a local Mosgirl girl, she won Horse of the Year. 
Although she says it's hard for local riders to stay in Dunedin once they become competitive. They all move north because they need the competition up there but do very well down here, this is their grassroots. Judges look for precision, control and efficiency under Equestrian Services New Zealand rules. The idea is to go through the start flags in a direct line to the finish flags, they're timed and if they have any deviations from the course then they're penalised appropriate points. Riders are looking ahead to a couple of major local shows over the next few months and Landreth says it's an exciting time with the sport a thrill for participants as well as spectators. Everybody wants to be a show jumper, everybody wants to be Mark Todd. Um, kids when they get on ponies at Pony Club, <laughs> first thing they want to do is jump. She's been involved in the local show jumping group for almost three decades and says Dunedin riders are typically strong competitors, aiming high, in and out of the ring. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. The local SPCA has started fundraising for a major facility upgrade, selling cupcakes in an effort to raise thousands of dollars. A Dunedin teenager is in the final stages of training as he prepares to represent New Zealand at an Australian cross-country contest. And St Paul's Cathedral has a new group of choristers, with members of a boys' choir officially installed during the weekend church service. And now let's uh, take a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. We welcome in Bruce Query. Hi Bruce. Hi Callum. Um, patients at Dunedin Hospital have been waiting in the corridors as the hospital has been struggling with an influx this year. Um, the Otago Regional Council is threatening to take the Dunedin City Council to court over problems with stormwater at a property on the peninsula. Um, Countdown Central Dunedin store is in a spot of bother um, after offering illegally discounted alcohol and a nationwide um, promotion. Um, the supermarket will be banned from selling alcohol for three days next month. And in sport, um, Otago skier Adam Hall has won the slalom event and the Winter Games being held in Queenstown. All right, details in the ODT tomorrow. Thanks, Bruce. All right, time now for a look at local weather. The report proudly brought you in association with Silverhorn Sportsbell. And we start with the City View today. A bird there having a bit of trouble at John Wilson Ocean Drive. 3 p.m. temperatures, 9 in the central city and at the gardens, 10 on the Tyree this afternoon. Situation map at cold front and trough of low pressure that moved over the South Island today moves away to the north tomorrow, but it is followed by cooler southwesterlies and then another anti cyclone. Around the main towns in the lower South Island tomorrow, Invercargill, some cloud, moderate southwester and 10. Gore, moderate southwester 10 as well. Showers later for Tianau and 10. Alexandra becoming fine and a high of 11. Queenstown, some cloud about tomorrow, moderate southwester and 10. Rain will clear through the day in Omaru, a high of 9, becoming fine for Wanaka, 11. And same for Twizel, a high of 11 degrees. For Dunedin tonight, a few showers. The low for us is 5. For tomorrow morning, showers will clear to fine tomorrow. Southwesterlies, high of 12, the low 6. And further ahead to Wednesday, once again, a few showers, but they will clear in the afternoon, a high of 11 and the low 3. Finally, to the Southern Clams Tidal and Fishing Information. High tide tomorrow around 22 midday in the morning. Low tide follows at about 6 in the evening. Fishing rated as bad tomorrow, but it's best at around 7 past 8 tomorrow morning. And that's our news for this Monday from the 39 Dunedin News Team. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.